Okay, so here is the midnight uh, uh, combiner box. Uh, this basically takes my 3600 watts of uh, photovoltaics. I have two strings out there that are two, uh, there's six, six, uh, six panels per string. Uh, they're 300 watt panels, obviously, so that gives me the 3600. And there's two 30 amp breakers here, so that, that, that's never tripped. They actually, the panels should only put out about nine amps, nine amps each. So that should only be uh, nine times three is 27 amps maximum. And since they're fixed panels, they don't usually even reach that. Uh, then from there, it comes into the, the power combined. Uh, and then I get to the charge controller. Uh, it's basically the same as what you see up on the computer. It's resting right now, so yeah, it doesn't tell you much, doesn't say any much. Uh, it's basically in rest mode. Um, and at midnight, the watts reset back to zero, so you don't get to see that what I've generated for the day. Um, and then from there, it goes through the sh shutoff switch um, into the batteries. Um, <clears throat> what you see here now is uh, in the back there is 16 batteries um, that's 48 volts then there's another 16 batteries here in the middle there's actually 17 because this is this this one string here kind of snakes around here and then there's 15 here right in front and then there's a 16 or there's 14 15 and 16 um, and then they're all so right there that's the negative for the all of them there's three you see the L there, uh, there's a little L where all the, um, where I've joined all the, the batteries together. And then the similar over here, um, except I didn't make an L. So right here is where the two of the batteries are joined. And then this cable comes around here and joins the third battery. So this is the 48 volts times three these are each 300 amp hour batteries so there's a total of 900 amp hours here at 48 volts um, in case people aren't familiar with lithium ion batteries what you see on the top of the batteries there's a little blinking uh, circuit board so what this does is keeps the batteries in balance so from each battery has a maximum of 3.6 volts um, times the 16 would give you that 3 volts would be 48. So 16 times 3 is to 48 volts. That's nominal rated. Um, that's basically when they're discharged. If they get down to 3 volts, I consider them fully discharged, actually. Um, they can't go down to, I think, 2.4 volts or something. But, but there's very little power between 3 volts and 2.4 volts. While the voltage change is quite large, the, the power that you're going to get out of the amp hours that's left in the batteries is extremely low. So it, and it's also very damaging for the batteries to go down like that. So you, I never do that. Um, but what this does is, so you're applying 48 volts across the negative and positive terminals, right? So this from the negative terminal to the positive is 48 volts. But that doesn't control what happens to each individual cell. So in principle, one cell could go to 3 volts, and another cell could be at 4 volts. Average would be 3.5 but that's 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 not good enough you can't have this battery at four volts and you wouldn't want this one to be at three so what you do is you top balance the pack um and the way you do that the way i did it since this midnight controller is quite nice um i set it to something like uh i forget what i did i think it was 55 volts that brought all the batteries up and what happens is when the, when this when this cell goes above 3.6 volts this light will turn solid and it'll start dissipating there's a little black resistor here that'll start dissipating the power across the cell to bring it back to 3.6 volts so what you do is you run the power up on the whole thing to say 55 volts making sure that none of the lights are lit if any of the lights light up then I would tell the control that I would go to the midnight controller and I would set that to be the flow voltage to stop it from going any higher I'd let the batteries eventually, when, once this cell has dissipated the power, then the light will start blinking again. And as long as they're all blinking, it's okay to proceed. 
then what I would do is raise the voltage on my midnight by 0.1 volts and then it would supply 0.1 volts greater across all the batteries and again you'll find certain batteries will go above the 3.6 maximum and the, 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 uh, the little circuit will dissipate the power but others will be blinking you know so some volt some bat batteries are below voltage and some are above and eventually I got it up to 56 volts and that's what I'm at now is 56 volts is the maximum that the charge controller will deliver across the, the batteries that is about an average of 3.5 volts per cell so um, and it, it, you have to do it for a couple of days and then after that they never need to they seem to stay balanced they, they don't go out of balance once you get them in balance so for a couple of days I did that then now they stay in balance so now I have 900 amp hours that's uh, that works beautifully I haven't, haven't had no issues with it um, here's my meter for the whole system so this is basically it's a it's just connected to a shunt the shunt is over here I don't know if I can get out of the light. Um, there's a shunt. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a there's a shunt there. All of my power is being drawn off of that. Um, and so right now I'm basically 98, 99 amp hours down. Um, currently the system is drawing a net of seven amps. So in the daytime some power will be coming in. This will go positive, but then if you turn on heavy loads, it'll go negative again. It's a net metering, so it's telling me this is taking a total of 7 amps out of the system right now. Um, the way I've wired it, that has to do with where you connect it on the shunt. If I connected it on the other side of the shunt, then it would do the opposite. It would tell me how many is coming in from the solar, pan solar panels, independent of how much the inverter is taking. But right now I have it set where I'm, I'm measuring what the inverter is taking minus what the solar panels are bringing in. Um, now this is a 12 volt device and since my batteries are 48 volts I had to do something like this I got a this little device is a and it, it should be a little warm and it is a little bit warm by no means is it something you can't touch or anything like that uh, but it is quite warm here in the house too so in the basement uh, but basically what you have is 48 volts coming in this is directly connected to the batteries and then going out of it is the 12 volts and there's a little 12 volt fuse there um, and then that comes down and comes into the back of it and that powers this device um, and that's basically all there is to this system um, the inverter is wired in here as well there's a shut off emergency shut off over there for that I tried putting a fuse in but the fuses that I had were not the correct kind or something because 200 amp fuses would blow when I was doing my laundry uh, it was drawing about 135 amps um, and obviously the dryer runs for a full hour, so it, uh, it would blow the fuse, a 200 amp fuse would blow even though I never got near 200 amps. Um, but I, uh, so I, after blowing two of them, I, uh, decided to bypass the fuse, so now there's no fuse there. I just have the emergency shut off. Now uh, there's not really much to the magnet sign that you can look at. Um, the only thing that it has on it here is up underneath here there is a button that you can press um, that resets the unit and turns it on and off um, it's not really some place you like sticking your fingers because that's also where the battery connections are at or down under there so I don't use it very often but you in principle can the remote control that I have upstairs can also do the exact same thing I can turn it on and off by pressing a button there so that's usually what I do okay that's all there is